Welcome. Today we're going to be looking at sailboats. In particular, what kind of sailboat should I buy? You know, when making a major purchase like this, there's a lot of considerations to make. One of it being budget. What's going to be my budget for not only the purchase of a boat, but the maintenance? Things like slips, where is it going to be and such? So yeah, there's a lot of things to consider. So uh, welcome aboard and let's see what we can kind of get. Probably the next consideration besides budget is, hey, what are you going to do with the boat? Are you going to use it as a condo on the water? Or are you going to do a circumnavigation? Or maybe you might want to go out and race around the, the boys on beer can night. Uh, we kind of pigeonhole sailboats into a number of different categories, being like blue water boats. Uh, uh, we look at cruisers. We look at racers. And this, for the most part, all has to deal with the, the design of their hull. As an example, blue water boats are often associated with uh, full keels and such, which inherently track very stably, uh, have a lot of ballast, and are relatively heavy. Uh, on the other hand, we might look at the more modern fin keel designs, which are more designed for maneuverability. One thing to consider about the hull designs and, and keels is the type of draft. That's the distance from the waterline to the bottom of the boat and where you're going to be sailing. Uh, again, every boat has an advantage and disadvantage, and same with the uh, keel designs. Overall, they're all pretty good in one respect or another. So when looking for a boat, the first option generally is Yacht World. And what I like about Yacht World is their search features in that you can curtail it very specifically to the type of boat you're looking for. Not only geographic region wise, but also things like hull, engine types, even your budget. Also, it's a good point to kind of locate where some of the brokerages are. And I do suggest if you're first looking for a boat is talk to a broker. Tell them what you're looking for, and they may suggest certain models of boats that might fit your bill. Besides Yacht World, we could look at Pop Yachts and even Craigslist. And Craigslist is great for dealing with uh, private owners. When all else fails, you could always go to the boat auction. So here's a Down Easter 38 with your kind of classic pirate line type of boat. Uh, also, it's a classic blue water cruiser. You can see it's outfitted so. It has tankage uh, that you might need for long distance cruising. It's set up with dinghy davits and uh, self steering and radar, everything that you need to make long distance passages. In fact, this boat has been from the Caribbean to Mexico uh, up here into Southern California, and the owners have owned it for 38 years and it was in great condition. So here we have an Endeavor 37 with a center cockpit. This allows it to have an aft stateroom as well as a V-berth up front. So it makes a great family boat or if you uh, like to have friends over and such, there's enough room for, for both of you. A uh, very stable, easy to sail boat and makes a great uh, extended cruising type of boat. So here we have a Catalina 36, a uh, popular boat. It's more spacious than it looks. Uh, one of those kind of race cruiser types of boats. Uh, it has an aft stateroom, not so much an aft cabin. It can hold a, a couple or a family. Uh, easy to sail boat, fun to sail boat. Uh, its tankage is a little small for, for really extended voyages, but overall a, a nice fun boat. So a couple of pieces of information I like to use when analyzing a potential boat is from sailboat data. And this will give me ideas on tankage and displacement and stability of a potential boat. So it allows me to kind of compare apples to apples. On the other hand, I also like to use the PHRF 
handicapped rating. And this is developed from racing. And it really kind of gives me an idea on the speed of the boat. So I could look at things like comfort ratio from the sailboat data to speed data on the PHRF ratings. So after looking at a bunch of boats, I came up with a laundry list of things that, that I definitely wanted in a boat. One is it can it be single-handed. Uh, whether I have a crew or not, I wanted the boat to be relatively easy to sail with just one person. Also, I wanted adequate tankage, and here I had 100 gallons of water and 40 gallons of fuel. I figured that would be good for a couple of weeks under sail uh, with a couple or a few people and such, and I could always add a little bit more to that. Uh, sleeping horizontal in the V-berth. Uh, this is more for being at moorage or in a slip. I wanted to be able to sleep beam to beam in the V-berth. Just my peculiarity. Also, I wanted to be able to sleep in the cockpit, whether underway or uh, on a nice warm summer night. I wanted to have enough room in the cockpit to, to sleep. Also, uh, cabin sole. I wanted it to be roomy enough where I could work out. Yeah, I could do little lifting weights, do some push-ups, uh, sit-ups and stretches and such. Also, I wanted to be sure that there was adequate headroom. I didn't want to be banging my head on things. Also, I wanted it to be comfortable as a liveaboard. Uh, potentially, I might be living on my boat, so uh, I wanted it to, to have a little bit more of a homey feel to it. Lastly, and probably one of the most important things, is I wanted it to be fun to sail. And fun to sail is a relative term compared to everybody, uh, and uh, maybe eventually you'll see what I mean. Here we have a De441, uh, kind of a race cruiser type of boat. This one definitely set up for cruising. Uh, with a modern hull design, it's a quick kind of nimble boat and very spacious inside. In the back, you see it has a hydro vane. That's a self-steering mechanism that could be used as an emergency rudder. Also, what we see is it has a fold-down transom. And this is great if you're a diver. It allows easy access in and out of the boat. Uh, also, it's good for swimming and if you have a dinghy aboard. So overall, a, a, a real nice boat for uh, long-distance passages and recreation at Anchorage. Here's a Juno 40, and uh, these are real popular in the charter industry. This model comes in two and three cabin varieties, uh, so it can hold a lot of people in them. Uh, this one's a two cabin variety, so it has a little bit more storage. has a nice cockpit, also has a sugar scoop in back that allows access for swimming and or diving. Uh, overall, pretty neat looking boat. Here we have a Hans Christian 33, uh, what you might consider is your classic blue water boat. Uh, definitely the model has a pedigree of circumnavigation and is ruggedly built in a very, very stout boat. One thing when we kind of talk about blue water boats uh, are the interiors. So if you're underway and you're heaving about, oh, one of the things you want is security to the feeling of security so things like handholds and blue water boats tend to be a little bit tighter inside not so you don't get thrown about so much you have something to kind of crash into instead of getting hurled about uh, this one has a pullman berth which is about center in the boat so it allows sleeping to be fairly well and also a fairly tight but very very functional galley so again if you're cooking underway uh, you're not getting thrashed about this one we actually took out and in 20 knot breeze uh, we started out but that condition didn't last very long So my overall impression of sailing on this boat was that uh, 
the deck space was was very very functional it was easy to move about um it actually performed a lot better than i thought as our winds kind of subsided it still held uh five or six knots with no problem also the motion underway very very comfortable here we go here we got a hunter hunter 43 yeah. This could be the bane of a lot of jokes, but uh, you know, one thing about hunters is they have a, a really spacious interior, and I think the heads in these things are, are, are great. You can see this is a center cockpit, so it has an aft cabin, nice V berth, and such. Very spacious inside. Probably not the most rugged boats, but hey, man, if you're out coastal cruising, uh, spending a week out on the boat, uh, good boats. I had a friend that took one of these down to the Sea of Cortez in Baja and spent two years on it and had very little complaints except the, the boat was a little too big to get close into a lot of areas. Here we have a, a Beneteau, another kind of classic, fairly available boat. Uh, you see these on a lot of videos, very, very common. Has a nice swim platform in the back if you're into diving, great boat for that. Uh, fairly spacious and again notice the, the cockpit's very very roomy so if you like to entertain or spend a lot of time out there a good boat for you one thing I must say about some of these newer boats is looking at the bow and considering anchoring uh, with some of these straight bows you have to worry sometimes about the, the anchors kind of banging into them here you go. I don't know much about this boat except it's from 1958. And look at the woodwork. Look at the bright work on this boat. Boy, it gleams. It has depths. It just glows. And if you want to be the pride of the marina, get one of these boats, maintain it well, and you'll turn heads, get compliments wherever you go. Boy, but yeah, you know, it's a lot of maintenance. And I must say, this gets redone every year every year it gets redone but man it shows it shows beautiful boat definitely And lastly, here we have a Cal 42, uh, a, a very kind of an old design, uh, 1970s, what we call Cruising Club of America design, uh, kind of long and sleek with overhangs, very uh, aesthetically pleasing looking boat that we have here, designed for uh, offshore racing for the most part, uh, Newport, Rhode Island to Bermuda, the Transpac going from California to Hawaii uh, types of racing. Uh, but also set up fairly well for single-handed, being single-handed. Notice the helm's a little bit forward. That allows you to sheet the winches and uh, the, the jib with tacking and stuff, so it makes it fairly easy. Again, kind of a, a classic line-looking boat. Again, very maneuverable, but also very stable at seas and such. So if you're looking for a sailboat, which one did you like and why? Comment down below in the comment section. If you like the content, hey, please like and subscribe. Hey, you guys have a great day. Thanks.